Hey guys and welcome to a new Pender Film tutorial. This is part 3 of the 5 part tutorial series on retouching a model's face. In the previous two parts we covered removing blemishes and enhancing the eyes. And in this part, part 3, we're going to be talking about skin smoothing, which is digital powder, removing some shine and fixing skin tones. So, first of all, we're going to talk about fixing skin tones. It's a really easy step and anyone can do it, to be honest, with any level of experience with Photoshop. So first of all, I'm going to zoom into her face here and find the part of the skin tones that are bothering me. There aren't many parts of her face because it was shot with a really good white balance on the day. And I also did it before I imported it. So there isn't much to fix here. But there are some red patches on her face, like around here on the nose ridge, ridge of the nose even. And there's a couple other parts on her cheekbone over here. So how we're going to fix this is using the hue saturation adjustment layer. So we're going to create a new hue and saturation adjustment layer. We're going to drop down this list to reds and use these eyedropper tools here to select the offending red. So we're going to choose this eyedropper here, the normal one without the plus or minus, and click on a red patch on her face. So let's find the reddest part. I'm going to go with the outside of a cheekbone here. Now you can see that these markers have moved slightly. So now we're going to choose a, using the minus eyedropper tool, we're going to choose a skin tone that we want to keep. So we've got this. Now you can probably see that this has moved even more. It's taking out some of the yellow from the selection. So we're going to keep selecting skin tones that we want to keep on the face. So now that we've done that, one way to tell if it's working is to go and fit this picture onto the screen and drag the hue all the way to one side. Now the colours that are really blue or cyan are the ones that are going to be affected. So you can see here that some of the lip is going to be affected on the shoulder and we don't want that to happen. So we can drag this part or whichever part is affecting that area in ever so slightly to change the parts that we're going to be affecting. So this just looks about right. There's still some issue with the lip, but we can mask that out later. So now we're going to pull this back to zero by entering zero into here. And then you want to grab the hue tool and pull it to a direction that will match the rest of the face. Now, as I said, this is a really subtle difference because there isn't much to fix, but there is a change. The, this side of the face in the shadow especially is blending more into this side of the skin. It's more orangey rather than pinky red. So now we're going to click on the layer mask, grab the brush tool, and just brush over the lip here where we don't want to affect the skin. Like so. You can also brush down here because this is the unimportant part and we want to keep this as normal as possible because we'll be applying skin smoothing to that later. So that's the uh, skin tones fixed, so we're going to go skin tones. Now the next part is uh, the digital powder. Digital powder is a really neat way of smoothing the skin and not getting rid of the pores. So we don't have a very porcelain sort of model as you'd find in most magazines these days. Now it may look weird, but just follow me and it will look good in the end. So the first thing we want to do is do the shift control alt and E key again to merge both of those layers. And then in here we're going to put digi powder and re-enable those layers. Now I'm going to invert this layer by holding control and I and then we're going to change the blending mode to vivid light. Now this looks really weird but bear with me. Then we're going to go to filter, select the layer first would be a good idea. Filter, other, high pass. Now you can see that the image has come back to normal. I'm going to choose 40 pixels, which is just about right for this picture. Hit OK. Then I'm going to filter again, go to blur and Gaussian blur. And I'm just going to put in a value of 3.5, since I've done this earlier, to check. Now you might notice there's halos around the ears, the lip, the nostril, and some of the uh, whites have been taken completely out. To fix this, we're going to double click on this layer, the digi powder layer, 
which brings up this layer style menu. Then we're going to go to blend if grey and then alt click on these anchor points and it splits them into two. So I'm going to drag this out until we start seeing some of the whites of the, her eyes come back in and the catch lights. Now we're going to alt and click on this one which is going to split this one and we can pull this all the way to the left which will bring back some of the darks like her eyebrows, the shadow inside of her ear and the inside of her lip. So we're going to keep pulling this and check the ear. Yeah, that looks fine. Let's drag the... Uh, right. Now 65, yeah. So there we go. Now we're not completely done yet. We're just going to check. This is what the final thing would look like. Without and with. So now we're going to fit screen and apply a layer mask with black. Now if you're wondering how I got it to be black in the first place, because normally when you hit the layer mask, it comes up white. You hold Alt and then hit the layer mask key and it will make a black layer mask. And as we all should know by now, black conceals, white reveals. So we're going to grab our brush tool, increase the size, hit D, which will default to the values and we're going to have white as a foreground colour. And now we're going to bring the opacity of the brush down to around 50% and then brush on the skin that we want to affect with the digital powder. So let's just brush on the forehead, around the eyebrows, down the ridge of the nose. And why do I keep saying ridge? Bridge of her nose, around the cheekbone. Now if you have a tablet, this would be so much easier, but I'm using my mouse at the moment because I'm not in the studio. Just go around the eyebrows like so, and then on this eye, and then for the chest area we're going to go to the brush tool and pull the opacity up to 100, click on the layer mask for the digital powder, and we're just going to brush on all over the chest like so. So that's the digital powder applied and as you can see it's added a really nice uh, powder to her face whilst keeping all the pores and all the little details of her face um, intact so it doesn't look too porcelain like she's fake. Now if you feel that it's too strong you can just lower the opacity of the layer. I'm going to bring it down to 70%. This is before and after you can see a huge difference, it just looks a lot smoother. I'm going to just bring this back up to 80% I think. So now that we've done that, we're going to tackle the shine on her bridge of her nose, forehead and just around here slightly. So we're going to make a new layer, shift control n, shine remove, hit enter, so we have a new layer. Now I'm going to choose the brush tool Opacity 100, bring the brush size down ever so slightly and choose a part of the skin, the eyedropper tool. You can hold Alt on your keyboard and select the colour, or you can choose the eyedropper tool from up here. Choose a colour, go to the brush tool and just go over the parts with the most shine. Let's have a bigger brush up here, which goes all the way around here down here. Now once we've done that, let's just fill in all there and bring the opacity down to say 35, maybe 30%. Go to filter, blur and Gaussian blur. Now I'm going to put in a value of 40 and hit enter. Now you can play with the skin tones and apply dodging, burning to where it may need it. So I'm just going to go down her nose again. This is also it blends in with the skin as it should. I'm going to bring the opacity down again to 25. This is before and this is after. You can see that it's barely noticeable even with the actual pixel selecting. You can barely notice that anything's above 
layer. So that's how you remove a shine. There are more advanced ways, but I did a quick and dirty trick that you can use on your projects if you want. So that's it for this part. I know it was really long, it's nearly 12 minutes now. So in this part we've covered digital powder, removing shine and fixing the skin tones on her face. So before and after. Now we, the next part is going to be hair and makeup. So I hope to see you in the next part. Thanks for watching.